Of course, Fred Rogers could not be here with us tonight, but we are so thrilled to have Bill Eisler, president of the Fred Rogers Company, here. A lot of hard acts to follow. I have to say that a lot floods into you on a night like tonight. For one, in 1972, I was working in the Pennsylvania Department of Education, and a certain Dr. Alvin Poussant was going to deliver a lecture at Cheney State College, which is now Cheney University. So I took a couple of my colleagues from Harrisburg, and we went to hear Dr. Poussant. Of course, I was mesmerized. The lecture ended. I turned to the woman on my right and I said, I can't believe him. He's unbelievable. She said, I didn't hear a word he said. I couldn't take my eyes off him. He's one of the most beautiful human beings I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't know if he's ever been called a sex symbol before, but that was my first meeting him. Also flooding, I grew up in Brookline, Pittsburgh. So being here tonight is really, really amazing. But being with Susan, and a lot about leadership tonight, but what has amazed me is not only how she has nurtured and grown this organization, but the work she's done in succession planning to see that the organization continues. And in working with Josh over the last couple of weeks, I know you've picked the right person. I did. You did. Well, the board did. Well, the board did. But we know you, Susan. We know you well. <laughs> and of course, when Dr. Poussaint got up, there's a line of Fred's, actually it's something he said he was always trying to write a song, called The Child Who's In Me Still, and Sometimes Not So Still. Aww. And if, right away when, I thought, I'm sorry, it was Kevin who said, good afternoon, Susan yelled, good evening. <laughs> the child in her has never, ever been still. <laughs> In 1994, Susan was asked by Dr. Margaret Kimmel to write a chapter about puppetry on Mr. Rogers' neighborhood for a book that was going to be published by the University of Pittsburgh Press, highlighting and celebrating Fred's work in children's television. Susan began her chapter, and I quote, at the hopeful age of 20, I took a plane to Pittsburgh to meet Fred Rogers. The year was 1968. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood had been on PBS for nearly a year. I was then a fledgling performer with a purchase for puppetry and a growing interest in child psychology. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was truly a phenomenon a television show that embodied the developmental and psychological theories that fascinated me. Played out before my eyes were issues of self-esteem, body integrity, autonomy, and a full range of childhood preoccupations. I knew I had to, I had to meet him. Much of our first encounter is a blur, but one sentence has stayed with me all these years. After I introduced Fred to my puppets and we chatted for a while, he remarked, I think that somehow you must remember what it was like to be a child. That was the sole suggestion for success. And that was the beginning of a friendship and working relationship with Fred Rogers and the Fred Rogers Company. Susan's first appearance in a neighborhood which you saw tonight was in 1971, three short years after she first met Fred. I'll never forget the first time I met her. It was about 1987. We're having a little trouble with dates these days. But Fred said, a good friend of mine is coming in who's been on the neighborhood a couple times, Susan Lynn. She's a very talented woman knows a tremendous amount about child development, and she is a force. You need to meet her. Her work with the company 
produced staff development programs for those who work with young children with issues that children face and encounter, such as children who are in a situation of domestic violence. Not an easy subject. The Pennsylvania Association for Domestic Violence asked if we would do a series. Fred's comment, I think you should call Susan. Shortly thereafter, the Pennsylvania Department of Education asked us to do a project on migrant children. Fred said, I think you should call Susan. We then did one on children whose parents were exper experiencing mental health. Again, we called Susan. Dr. Passant mentioned different in the same. I remember when we were raising funds to do that project, one of the corporate foundations said, I can't believe you want to use puppets. A year after that program was released, that corporation was using that series in their human resources department to help their employees understand issues around racism and prejudice. Susan could talk about tolerance all the time. And she could tolerate literally anything. A great strength. What I learned from her is that there are differences and there are similarities. A very similar message to Fred Rogers. One of Fred's quotes that I like, and every time Susan comes into my thoughts, I think this is a quote that he could have written for Susan. Please think of the children first. If you ever have anything to do with their entertainment, their toys, their custody, their day or night care, their health care, their education, listen to the children, learn about them, learn from them, think of the children first. Susan, you've taught us all to think for the children first. And for that, I'm grateful to know you. And I would like to ask Josh and Kevin to come back up. I've been asked tonight to do something, Susan, that you developed also, which is a CCFC's Fred Rogers Integrity Award. I was with her when she presented it for the first time to Senator Tom Harkin in Washington, D.C. His staff person called me after that and said it was the most, one of the most meaningful tributes he had ever received. Rafi, Annie Letter, Leonard, Morgan Spurlock, and now Susan Lynn. <laughs> Nobody more deserving. Susan. The inscription reads, Fred Rogers Integrity Award presented to Susan Lynn by the Campaign for a Commercial Free Childhood, June 13th, 2015. It's a shame it's a Saturday, because if it was a Friday, we would have to get King Friday the 13th to present this to you. <laughs> Susan, a well-deserved honor and a great, great Thank career. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, so, thank you. Is this on? This is on now? Okay. Um, so I know that there are people here who are just here to see Audrey. <laughs> We've been waiting and asking, but um, yeah, I, I, I actually have some, some things I want to say. Um, first of all, there are three people who couldn't be here tonight who were going to be here, who are very, very important to me um, and to CCFC, and one of them is my husband, Cliff Crane, who um, has been ill but is actually doing well at the moment, but he's still in the hospital. Um, Clifford has been a rock to me. I mean, Clifford, when, when we were going through the, the Disney thing, as we now call it, <laughs> the Disney thing, I, I could feel his strength. I mean, it was just unbelievable. So, um, I, so he, he um, I mean, and it's funny about Cliff because really this doesn't matter to him. I mean, Clifford loves me as Mr. Rogers would say, just the way I am. So, um, I know that. Um, and um, also, um, Doreen Miller, who is on our board, um, is also ill, and um, she had a great deal to do with tonight, I know, and is just really wonderful, and um, we, we miss her just um, a whole lot, and wish her the well to hurry up, not just for us, but also for her and her family. And um, the other person who's not here is Jim Matrock, who unexpectedly also is ill, although he is, he's, you know, he's doing fine, but um, Jim has also been so connected to CCFC for such a long time. He was at the first Golden Marble protest, and, um, and is now just has this fantastic relationship with Josh, so that continue, but we'll certainly miss them. Um, the other thing that um, I want to do um, is thank the people who are here, because um, we wouldn't be here without, without you. Um, so um, I'd like to start um, with my family all over here, my cousins who are like siblings to me, and um, my daughter, and as Josh calls him, her beau, John. <laughs> and, um, and, and my stepson, and my daughter-in-law, and my two incredible grandchildren. And why don't you just stand up, please? And, and but, but, um, but anyway, um, the thing about um, about you know about my daughter and um, and um, Josh and his family is that they have been phenomenally tolerant and kind about having a fanatic for a mother and grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also um, interesting, not interesting. They have have really incredible values and um, are fantastic parents. Those of them who are parents. So. Thank you to you. And so also, if you were at the very first Golden Marble protest, why don't you stand up? Okay, why don't you stay, why don't you stay, stay just stay standing. So um, if, if um, you were at any Golden Marble pro protest, please stand up. Okay. If you were ever at a CCFC summit, please. Okay. <laughs> Sasha, you were the you were the first golden marble. Okay. So, if I ever called you for advice, please stand up about anything related to CCFC. Please, please stand up. Okay. If I ever called you in tears about something related to CCFC, please stand up. <laughs> and, um, and, and if you've ever donated to CCFC, please stand up. And if you're related to anybody who has anything to do with CCFC, please stand up.
Thank you. So, um, and if you didn't stand up, please. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, I use puppets to talk about feelings, and um, I'm going to go after him. But she's not going to have the last word. I'm going to have the last word. Still seem literally dooming here. Oh no. <laughs> What's the matter? Josh is here. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about marketing to kids again. <laughs> Audrey, um, I'm leaving CCFC. 
<laughs> Don't they like you anymore? <laughs> no, I wonder if it's time for me to leave CCFC. You're leaving CCFC. Mm -hmm. You are deserting CCFC. You are abandoning CCFC. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, no. But I'm leaving CCFC. You are leaving CCFC. And 
Like his, he has, I mean, I can, tr I just can trust Josh to, to do the right thing. And, and of all the issues we may have had together, which you have to have if you're working together for 12 years, it's never was about integrity. It wasn't. It was never about our values. And that's just been so, it's not often you find somebody who shares your deepest values that way. And um, it is such a joy and a relief to me to know that um, that he's where CCFC is going. He's going to take it to the next place. So um, thank you, Josh. And thank you all. And um, I think there's more party coming. So.